How's it going everybody? Tommy Starr here with TD Healthy 2015 bringing you another video. Today I'm here with my three friends Jason, Jason, and Jason. Actually, we got Jess, we got my sister Angel, and we got her husband Phelan. And today is movie marathon time. It's October, it's Halloween time. We are all four going to watch all 12 Friday the 13th films back to back. It's going to take about 18 hours, but we can do it. You guys ready? Yep. Let's do this. Starting with number one. Well, as you can see here, I got the Friday the 13th complete Blu-ray box set collection that I'm sure you guys have seen before. One of the best sets, best Blu-ray collections ever to, um, ever to be put out. Like I said, every single movie is in here, all 12, including the remake. So, we're going to crack this open and get going on Friday the 13th, part one. As you see, my sister Angel went all out for this marathon and even did her own nails. Tell me that isn't badass. Look at that. Look at that logo. It looks like identical. And then there's the mask. Jason. The machete with the blood badass she does these by freehand it's awesome oh yeah as you see <laughs> i'm all ready to go i got a whole 12 pack of mountain dew game fuel they got some energy drinks of their own 12 movies to go you guys ready yeah all right we're gonna go ahead and get started and what i'm gonna do as we go through each movie i'm gonna give you all a fun interesting fact on each of these movies Let's do all right it. starting with the very first one friday the 13th from 1980 directed by sean s cunningham this of course is the film where jason's mother pamela Voorhees is the killer and we do not see jason make his first appearance until the very end where he jumps out of the lake at alice fun fact the original title of this film was called long night at camp blood let's do it all right number one down time for number two all right it takes us to the first sequel second installment friday the 13th part two from 1981 directed by steve Miner. this of course is the film where uh jason gets introduced as the actual killer and he wears the gunny sack on his face. Fun fact, Jason's original name was Josh. Okay, so that is two down. We're about to start Friday the 13th, part three. All right, here we go with Friday the 13th, part three, from 1982, directed by Steve Miner. This one, of course, is the first film in the franchise where Jason picks up the iconic hockey mask for the first time. Not to mention, this is also the uh, only film that was actually filmed in 3D. But that's not the fun fact. The fun fact on this one is what we are hearing right now. The, the iconic sound we hear in every Jason movie, which a lot of people mistake with. <laughs> what we're actually hearing is sound composer Harry Manfredini saying into a, a delayed microphone the words kill, kill, kill. Ma, 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 which comes out as <laughs> All right, number three is down complete. We are a quarter of the way through. How's everybody doing? Okay, over here. All right. 
Jess has fallen asleep for every movie so far. (laughs) But anyway, it's quarter of the way through, and we are about to start number four. All right, that takes us to Friday the 13th, the final chapter, the fourth film in the franchise from 1984, directed by Joseph Zito. This, of course, was intended to be the final film in the series, which, of course, was not. This film also introduced Tommy Jarvis into the series, who becomes a very prominent character over the next three films. Fun fact, actress Judy Aronson, who portrayed Samantha during the shooting of her death scene, which of course took place in the water, after several takes, she she was becoming very, very cold due to the water being like 35 to 40 degrees. Uh, repeatedly requested to take a break um, to uh, director Joseph Zito so she could warm up, and he kept telling her, no, we have to get this scene done. Well, eventually, Ted White, who portrayed Jason in this film, walked up to Joseph Zito and said, if you do not let this girl take a break and warm up, I'm walking off the set, and I'm quitting. Go, Ted White. In the end, though, however, Judy Aronson did, in fact, get hypothermia, And I can't imagine what would have happened to her if uh, she would not have taken a break. So, yeah, pretty cool. All right, number four is done. That means we are officially... A third of the way complete. We have eight films to go. And Jess has already pushed out. She pretty much pushed out like on the second film. But she's already upstairs sleeping. And we still have eight films to go. What a loser. All right. Time for number five. All right. That takes us to Friday the 13th, part five. A New Beginning. From 1985. Directed by Danny Steinman. This one is known as the imposter Jason, because, of course, this is not actually Jason in this film. This is a character by the name of Roy, who kind of goes crazy uh, after seeing his son killed um, and decides to use the Jason character to go on his murder spree. Uh, One of the least favorite out of the series uh, by most uh, Friday the 13th uh, fans, and I think one of the main reasons may just simply be because it's not Jason in this film, I like it. I uh, definitely think it's uh, uh, you know the coolest one of the coolest masks because it's got the blue on it. I don't know why in this menu screen it's red because um, I guess at the beginning you actually see the original Dr- Jason in a dream sequence, so that could be, uh, yeah, could be what uh, why they're showing that. But anyway, speaking of which, fun fact: the original idea for Jason's mask was not a hockey mask. It originally was going to be a baseball umpire mask. True story. Let's get it going. All right, everybody. Part five is done. Time for number six. And it just so happens that number six is mine and Phelan's favorite one. This is just, everything about this one is the coolest. Let's get going. All right, that takes us to Friday the 13th, part six, Jason Lives. From 1986, directed by Tom McLaughlin. This one, of course, is the... uh, Return of Jason. Because, of course, he got killed at the end of Part 4. Part 5 was the imposter Jason. Now, this is the one where Jason officially takes a turn to the, you would want to call, zombie Jason from here on out for the rest of the series now, where he's pretty much indestructible. Like I said, definitely one of my favorites in the series, and Phelan's as well. Fun fact, this mask in this movie was used in the three previous films to this one. It's the first time 
I think ever in a in a film where a movie prop was actually used more than once. They use the same mask from part three, four, five, and six. Five, obviously the imposter mask was blue, but all the other scenes in that movie where it showed real Jason, like in flashbacks and dream sequences, that mask was the same mask used in three, four, five, and six. So pretty darn cool. <laughs> Okay, number six is done. We have officially reached the halfway point. How you guys feeling? We're feeling pretty good over here. Wide awake. Wide awake. It's time for the halftime show. Let's do it! All right, continuing on here with the second half of the series brings us to Friday the 13th, Part 7, The New Blood, from 1988, directed by John Carl Buechler. This one happens to be the very first one where Jason, other than Tommy Jarvis, actually faces a pretty big challenge with Tina, who's got telekinetic powers, and gives Jason a run for his money. So, fun fact. Throughout the entire franchise of Friday the 13th, there, there have been 15 different actors who have portrayed Jason Voorhees. Whether it's him as a child, or him as the killer in the movie, or various different uh, stunt scenes. But yes, 15. Now this one happens to be the first one that Kane Hodder takes over the role, which he continued to do for 8, 9, and 10. So 7 through 10, the only actor who portrayed him more than once, Kane Hodder. <sighs> All right, number seven is down. We have five to go. And look who decided to come back to the party. Just She just actually came back down here just so she could continue sleeping. Nice but uh, anyways, moving right along. All right, moving right along here. We have reached Friday the 13th, part eight, Jason Takes Manhattan. From 1989, directed by Rob Hedden. This was the very first film in the series not to take place at a camp or a lake. This film is 80% on a ship and 20% takes place in New York. Fun fact. So towards the end of the film, while Jason is chasing Sean and Rennie through New York, he ends up chasing them right into a diner. And in the diner, there is a employee slash cook that uh, comes at Jason to try to stop him. And Jason takes him and just throws him across the counter and he smashes right into a wall and dies. Well, that guy who played that character takes over the role of Jason in Freddy vs. Jason, a guy by the name of Ken Kurtzinger. Kane Hodder wanted to continue the role of Jason in Freddy vs. Jason, but the producers of the film 
wanted somebody taller so they could tower over Robert England. That's right. <laughs> Can't get the adrenaline pumping without the terror, good people. All right. Number eight is complete, which means that we are now two thirds of the way through. Okay. Let's keep going. All right. We have come to the ninth installment Jason Goes to Hell, the final Friday. The second time they intended to end the series, which still never happened. From 1993, directed by Adam Marcus. In this film, we only get to see Jason in his true form in the beginning and the end. Throughout the entire film, he is hopping from body to body, possessing the soul of various different people. Fun fact. This was New Line's first attempt to cross over the Friday the 13th franchise with the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise. At the end of this film... There's a scene where we see Jason's mask on the ground and Freddy's glove comes out of the ground and pulls the mask down into hell. That that scene was actually done by Kane Otter. When we see Freddy's glove come up out of the ground, that's actually Kane Otter, Kane Otter wearing the glove. At that point, we thought that the next movie we'd see would be Jason and Freddy together, but that didn't happen for 10 more years until Freddy vs. Jason in 2003. All right, number nine is complete. That means there's three left. That means we are three quarters of the way done. And this is taking longer than planned. This is going to go until a little longer than anticipated. Sick. All right. Well, this next one we're about to watch just happens to be my sister's favorite in the series. Is that true? Yes. I love this one. I just love that it's, you know, based out of space and it's just cool. I love the mask. And I love my favorite part is that part where he freezes her face and then it just busts all up. I just love that part. So, yep, this one's my favorite. Yeah, that def definitely has to be one of the coolest kill scenes in all of the Jason movies. All right, let's do this shit. All right, that brings us to the 10th installment, Jason X, from 2001, directed by James Isaac. This, of course, takes Jason 400 years into the future and into space. Fun fact. So Jason Goes to Hell marked the return of Sean S. Cunningham to the franchise since Friday the 13th, Part 1. Cunningham's plan for the franchise was to lead into a first-ever Freddy vs. Jason movie. Well, throughout most of the 90s, Cunningham and New Line Cinema poured millions into trying to develop the movie which only ended in tons of unproduced screenplays. So eventually, Cunningham lost his patience and agreed to make a new Jason movie, which turned into Jason X. All right, we are on number 11, 10 films down, and it's completely daylight out. It's like, what time is it? Nine, seven, oh, it is 7.45 in the morning. But anyways, it's time for my favorite, my favorite one, Freddy vs. Jason. <laughs> All right, that brings us to the 11th installment, Freddy vs. Jason, from 2003, directed by Ronnie Yu. This film, of course, for the first time on screen, Freddy and Jason come together to battle it out. And you gotta love it. When I found out about this movie, when it was finally coming out, I was like, it's gonna be so stupid. And I was so surprised, because it was actually really damn cool. Fun fact, 
So, out of all 12 Friday the 13th films, this movie grossed the highest at the box office. $115 million, with also the highest budget of $25 million. So I guess that tells you, the more money you spend, the more money you make. Freddy vs. Jason is complete. We have come to the 12th and final installment in the Friday the 13th series. Let's get this shit over with. Alright, here we go with the last film in the franchise. Number 12, Friday the 13th, the remake from 2009, directed by Marcus Nispel. And this film, obviously, we all know, is the remake in the series where they completely rebooted the story of Jason, which I wasn't too thrilled about when I heard, but I thought they did a very good job. Fun fact, and the last fun fact for this video is going to be... Jason Voorhees in the Friday the 13th films out of all horror movies have the highest body count there is, which is 189. And if you want to break it down, we all know that the first one is Mrs. Voorhees. She's got nine in the first film. Part five isn't Jason, it's Roy. He's got 17. And then Jason himself, which he is in the other 10 films, has a total body count of 163. So pretty damn impressive for Jason Voorhees. And that's compared to Michael, Leatherface, Chucky, Pinhead. No matter who you want to bring to the table, nobody can outdo Mr. Voorhees. We are done! Well, everybody, we did it. We did it. And I am glowing like a ghost. <laughs> we made it through all 12 films. How's everybody feeling? I'm not even tired. Right. <laughs> Nobody fell asleep at all. Not one bit. Nope. Okay, the only one who didn't fall asleep was me. <laughs> 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 Okay, Phelan wins again. Again. Yep. Prick. Uh, I'm telling you, it's that moon mist he's drinking. The moon mist. <laughs> if you're going to watch Friday the 13th, I recommend moon mist. <laughs> I had a great time. This was awesome. Hope you guys enjoy this awesome video. Minnie stayed awake. Yeah, Minnie stayed awake too. And, and Fletcher stayed awake. Poor Fucking Fletcher. dogs. Look at her. She stayed up the whole time <laughs> with the camera on her. All right. Well, that about does it, everybody. Thanks so much for watching this video. Please drop a comment below. Let me know what you guys think about all the fun facts and what your favorite Friday the 13th film is. I guess we should do that. Go down the list. My favorite is Friday the 13th, part six, Jason Lives. Jess, what's your favorite? Toss up between the... Two we're, last we're not ones. doing toss ups. I can't pick. It's the two last ones. I'm sorry. What are the two last ones? The one we just watched and the one before it. <laughs> okay, so I guess she's talking about Freddy vs. Jason and Friday the 13th, yeah, the remake. There go. Thank you. Angel, what's your favorite? Number 10. Jason is in space. <laughs> <laughs> That's the actual title. Jason is in space. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Jason X. And uh, Phelan, what's your favorite? I'm going to ditto Tommy's response. Part 6, Jason. Right lives. here, bro. We know good shit. All right, everybody. Let us know what your favorite is. Put a little like to this video. Share it around. We'll see you guys next time.